Welcome back folks to Investor Diaries. And if you haven't done already, please smash the subscribe button so you don't miss the latest and greatest content. All right, now let's get back to it. In this video, we'll speak about a company that is one of the most heavily traded small cap stocks in the past three months. Yes, we'll speak about fuel cell energy, which trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol FCEL. Fuel cell energy stock is down over 50% in the past year. Is it another forgettable high growth company or does it have some growth potential over the next decade for the patient investors? Should you buy, hold or sell this stock? Let's find out in today's video. All right, so Fuel Cell Energy, it's a company that's headquartered in Connecticut. It designs, manufactures, operates and services direct fuel cell power plants. The company's fuel cell technology, it is an alternate to the traditional combustion-based power generation and is therefore complementary to the intermittent sources of energy such as solar and wind turbines. As one of the biggest publicly traded fuel cell manufacturers in the US, the company provides clean energy in over 50 locations all over the world. So why are we speaking about fuel cell energy stock right now? Its stock price is down over 50% over the last one year. It reached a high of over $13 and even saw a dip to as low as $3.68 earlier this year. So Nidish, first, the investors have recently turned their attention towards renewable energy stocks following the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which has caused a high surge in oil and gas prices. That's right. Crude prices are up almost 35% year to date trading at over $105 per barrel, while gas prices in Europe hit all-time highs earlier this month amid the uncertainties about these supplies. So this could actually make the energy importing countries more serious about their transformation towards renewable energy generation as well as hydrogen and fuel cells as a means of improving energy independence. As you can see, the macro trends are positive from a sectoral perspective which means that fuel cell could do well in the long run. But is that actually the case? So viewers, again, it's very important that we don't take a decision based on sectoral economics and policy decisions. We want everyone to understand that we have to differentiate between macro level indicators and companies execution standpoint. And let's use this video to try to understand where fuel cell energy lies in the middle of all of this. Yes, that's right, Api. Our belief is that this sector will continue to grow, but we are not very bullish on this particular company. And you may ask, why is that? So Fuel Cell Energy recently published its Q1 FY22 earnings with revenue growing by stronger than expected 113% year over year to $31.8 million. Now, although the company's net loss for the quarter was wider than expected, Expanding the top line is likely the key priority for investors at this phase. Absolutely. But you could actually argue that this outperformance was solely due to the sale of six fuel cell modules to a subsidiary of POSCO Energy as part of the recent settlement agreement. Now, even after adjusting for certain impairment charges and manufacturing variances, the product gross margins actually came in well below 20%. Negative free cash flow of $63.6 .6 million escalated to a new all-time high due to ongoing increases in operating expenses and project assets. The company also remitted $10 million in fees to its outside counsel as a result of the above settlement with POSCO Energy. Moreover, management has actually failed to procure renewable natural gas for the projects in a timely fashion, thus causing a material hit to project economics. And we quote from the recently released financial statements. As further background to the cost related to the Toyota project, it was determined in the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2021 that a potential source of renewable natural gas at a favorable pricing was no longer sufficiently probable for the Toyota project. Thus, as the Toyota project is being constructed, only amounts that can be redeployed for alternative use are being capitalized. The balance of costs incurred, that is the construction costs mentioned above in an amount equal to $3 million, 
are being expensed as cost of generation revenues. Even worse, the company is going to miss the June 30th deadline for the project to achieve commercial operations, thus resulting in the need to secure an extension from Toyota. And this is something that the company highlighted in its recently announced financial results. And we quote, Fuel cell platform equipment has been built and delivered to the site and civil construction work is underway. While we have made substantial progress, we do anticipate that commercial operations will be delayed beyond June 30, 2022 and an extension to our hydrogen power purchase agreement will be required from Toyota who may or may not grant such an extension in its sole discretion. So when we look deeper at 10Q, we found that there are two additional projects which are under construction for which the company has again failed to procure natural gas under long-term supply agreements. Additionally, the projects have actually been calculated at substantially lower natural gas prices, so therefore the project economics is definitely going to suffer. This is actually going to impact margins, more importantly in the generation segment. Folks, we are not trying to pin down the company and the reason we wanted to highlight quotations from their recently concluded financial statements is because these are statements that the company is making. And there's a reason to be bearish about this company because the execution as we see has gone horribly wrong. So where do all these points leave us with? Is fuel cell energy a buy, hold or sell? We at Investor Diaries firmly believe that the company's ongoing execution issues remain a major cause for concern. So we are not buyers of fuel cell energy till we see two to three consecutive quarters of encouraging results. So while fuel cell energy's F22 stop line performance should benefit from fuel cell module sales to a subsidiary of POSCO Energy, we expect the annual cash usage of fuel cell energy to increase to $250 million. And assuming no additional sales of common shares into the open market, unrestricted cash would be down to below $200 million at the end of the fiscal year. More so, the recent increase in the natural gas prices will negatively impact a number of projects that the company is trying to execute. This is actually going to cause a huge dent to the margins of the company. And this is a very important point, folks. The reason why we are bearish about this company. So folks, our recommendation therefore is to not enter the stock at all. If you're looking for other recommendations to deploy your cash, feel free to check out some of our other videos where we have a buy recommendation. That's a wrap folks. Do let us know your thoughts on the fuel cell energy stocks in the comment section below. And as always, stay tuned and stay focused. Thank you. Thanks everyone.